Here we go. Hi there, everyone. It's Anthony, and I am back again with the man, the myth, the legend, who goes by the name of... Kylan Fowler. Oh, and <laughs> Kylan Fowler. You were so eager to, to say um, your name that time. But anyway, and we're here to react to another episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Season 2, Episode 17, Passion. Last episode I thought was a pretty crazy, funny episode with Xander getting, you know, the affections of basically all the women in the world. So, yeah, it'll that was be a doozy. Yeah, definitely. So it'll be interesting to see, I guess, where they where they go next. Do you have any any predictions for like two by 17 passion? Uh, I think they're going to take a break from the Xander and Cordelia love uh, love love mm -hmm. affair for a while now that they've actually like actually done something with it i think uh oz and willow will probably have a little bit more shine um passion i, I really I, I think maybe something that has to do with angel is gonna happen i don't know mm -hmm. if he's gonna go back to being the good guy again but something passionate though mm -hmm. uh, a crime of passion if you will crime of passion all right interesting yeah we it does feel like we're kind of just not really not really overdue but definitely ready for some more progression in the angel thing now since it happened a few episodes ago and they've gone a few episodes of just having him kind of creep in and do something evil just to remind us that he's evil it'll be cool to yeah push that story forward a little bit more all right then let's go ahead and get into it buffy the vampire slayer season two episode 17 passion this is a swanky track. Sleeping. Do they not see Angel standing over there? I guess not. I mean, no that's creepy. Unbidden. And how? Is that him thinking or narrating or something? Whoa. Wow. Oh, you can see him in the window right there. I don't think I noticed that before. What other choice do we have? This man is in her room. Well, it looks like you might have had a pretty good idea when you said this would have to do with Angel. Mm-hmm. Passion. I knew it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what else I'm excited to see? What? I'm excited to see Angel emasculate Spike some more. <laughs> Whoa. He was in my room. Angel's pretty talented. So Angel definitely could have killed Buffy at this point. Probably. <laughs> or not even probably, definitely. Excuse me, but have you ever heard of knocking? We're supposed to get some books. <laughs> Into the public Stop. library. This is a school library. So. Since when? Uh, Honestly. Uh, Don't forget, I need your sample spreadsheets by the end of the week. Jenny. Both a paper printout and a copy. Wait, what did she do again? She was. A, she lied. She lied that whole time. She still had good intentions, though. <laughs> she doesn't seem like she's still with Giles. So. But she was trying to talk to him last episode, right? And he didn't want to talk to her. Oh, that is that is true. I didn't know I was going to fall in love with you. Wow. Oh, God. That was beautiful. Are you crying over there? Do you want to? A little bit. I just want to be right with you. Don't tell me. He's changed. He's not the same guy you fell for. In a nutshell. Joyce just where she knows anyway, everything. Um, since he changed, but she got he's it, been though. kind of following me yeah. around. Has he done anything? No, no, it's not like that. He's just been hanging around. I mean, he has killed some people, but other than that, no. I'm sure he will. He's like Bookman. Until then, try and keep happy thoughts and. Oh, wait, hasn't Angel been in her place too? I just thought about that. Did she see something about Angel? Willow? Did he leave her a drawing? Willow? Oh, crap. Yeah, remember he went into her house that one time? Ah, oh, dang. Oh, he killed her fish. That's crazy. That's terrible. Thanks for having me over, Buffy. <laughs> that was a funny cut. 
Why don't they just have a sleepover at Xander's house? <laughs> at this point, she's been everywhere. I mean, Angel's been everywhere. Anything I'm not already doing that is. That's enough! You're just getting all your wishes this episode, huh, Kyland? I told you, that's what I said. Mexico feel. <laughs> Makes a girl feel. Oh. What is it, Ben? Really? What are you gonna give him? His soul. This episode is slow. You said it's slow. Yeah. She's here. Five hours of lesson plan yesterday down the drain. <laughs> Willow sounds so hurt. You know that if I have a chance to make this We're up, good here. Let's just save it. Damn. Oh my gosh. What? That was scary. That was her mom? Yeah. Oh, snap. It's summer. I, I just want to get inside, okay? <laughs> this is so. I'll die without Buffy. I haven't been able to sleep since the night we made love. I need her. Wow, that was really low. Wow. Could I see you later? You could stop by my house. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That escalated quickly. They're going to be getting that freaky on. Floppy disk? I think so. Definitely is. I've That's one of those in a while. Yeah. You know what I hate most about these yeah. things? Oh my god. <laughs> They're so damn fragile. Why are you getting Teacher closer to him? Makes three. <laughs> that brings up the intensity. Yeah. He looks so happy, so excited to kill her. He doesn't even have, he's just walking at a brisk pace. But now he's kind of running. Maybe that is running for a vampire. Sorry, Jenny. This is where you get off. <sighs> I never get tired of doing that. Was he the first? No, wait. I don't want to know. I don't think I <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know. What did that say? Upstairs. Want to be like Angel or something. Wait a minute. Is she dead? Yep, there's a corner. She is dead. Are you kidding me? Dude, are you kidding me? I need to make a fun rose. That's what like the whole trail of roses and everything like Angel is crazy. Oh man. He, 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 he just wanted to see Buffy's reaction to this. Oh my gosh. The ecstasy of grief. Oh my gosh, Angel like... Angel's a dirty dog, man. For real. I don't know, man. He's doing some irredeemable things. Man. Yeah, like that's crazy. He's made no real effort to kill Buffy at all. Like, really? Like, he just, like... He, he sits over her while she's sleeping and does all these mind games. He definitely doesn't just want to kill her because he could have been done that. And he drew a picture of her lying there dead. Almost. Well, I guess... Oh, no. Oh. Jeez, whatever happened? 
happen to wood stakes. No fair going into the ring in the We're just sitting there looking at this. Oh my gosh. Zaz really came in with you. Like, oh right. You've had your fun. My fun. Spike and Drusilla are really just gonna stand around. Are oh, they just walking away now? He probably could have lasted a few, or like another minute for her to kill Angel. This wasn't your fight. <laughs> Dang. Are you trying to get yourself killed? You can't leave me. I can't do this alone. If we could live without passion. I thought that was you talking for a second for some, some reason. Kind of peace. But we I do have a pretty angel esque voice. Empty rooms. Shuddered and dank. We're gonna bring him back. Hmm. Interesting though, I forgot about the floppy disk. So how do we feel about that episode? I think it's a pretty crazy episode. I mean, I remember when I first saw that and like just the whole Giles killing, I mean, Angel killing Jenny thing and leaving the trail of roses up to Giles. I was like, what in the world? I remember I texted like three people like, this show I'm watching is insane. Like what this guy just did, I can't believe he just did this. Like, I mean, I was like, are you serious right now? And it just, it also was just like such a crazy messed up moment to where you're like, yeah, I mean, just when you started getting comfortable, then all of a sudden you're reminded that anybody can just die. It was kind of a deep episode in a lot of ways. And like yeah, it just no, was trying to- I, I agree with that. Yeah. Like it was just trying I to put the characters through a lot. What did you think about it? Uh, I liked it at times, but other times I felt like it was kind of a drag. Uh, mm -hmm. like I, I liked that they didn't like I like how I said like they didn't spend too much time with Xander and Cordelia uh, mm -hmm. because we already have all that information from them uh, I kind of like that they did go with the with ex uh, expanding upon Angel I thought that was pretty cool, mm -hmm. and I thought that was like you said, like you said earlier, it was overdue for them to be doing that. But for me, pacing wise, it just felt a little bit slow. And I know, I know, like a lot of stuff happened with like Angel and Jenny, but like it still felt like there wasn't much going on. Yeah. So, like, I guess I'm just trying to see where you're coming from when you say it wasn't a lot going on, because to me, it felt like a lot did go on. In this episode so like do you mean there wasn't a lot going on because there wasn't like any like i guess central like monster to be that we don't know or like it wasn't a lot going on because it wasn't like i guess i just mean like what do you what would you have wanted to see going on maybe to add to what happened well, in the episode i guess i just mean like it, it seems like the only thing that really got like the only thing that really happened was like the pre preparation and defending from angel mm-hmm I feel like it, it, it's kind of typical of Buffy to do something like that, but like pair it with like something else going on too. Like they usually have multiple stories going on at one time. Well, I mean, they, they did have multiple stories because they had Jenny trying to find a way to kill Angel and whatnot. So, I mean, that was kind of like a, a B story right there following Jenny, you know, in her, I guess, search to get the you know get the orb and get all that the ingredients or the instructions or whatever she needs to kill angel because partially i'm guessing because she wanted to get back in the good graces of you know giles and buffy and also just because she wanted you know obviously for an, an angelus soulless angel whatever you want to call him to go away so i felt like you know i mean i felt like that was kind of the other sort of storyline that was going on there and you know angel leaving his notes and stuff I guess it was still technically part of the Buffy trying to defend from him, but I thought it was a pretty, pretty cool addition because they are just so like creepy and weird. The fact that he actually was sitting there drawing stuff out. Well, what did you think about Jenny's death? Like, I guess just what are your thoughts on that in general? Unexpected as heck, man. I was not yeah. expecting that, and I'm quite frankly a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't know if I really wanted her to die at all. Like I thought yeah. that she was a good character. I, I really liked her, what she brought to the show. So I'm a yeah. little upset about that. But other than that, like 
I think it was pretty. I think it was pretty clever of them to go with that and un- very unexpected. Yeah, definitely. And then Giles and being just so angry about it and going to kill Angel. At least he got a good few shots in and whatnot with the torch and everything. Yeah, for a while I thought he was going to be Angel. Yeah, it really did kind of look like it. It seems like right now Spike has really just gotten <laughs> pushed off to the side because, like, he's in the wheelchair. Drusilla's doing more than him. Angel is just, like, emasculating him, like, every chance he gets, like you said. Like Spike, and then when mm-hmm. the fight is happening, Spike's just kind of there. He's like, "Don't tag in if they didn't tag you in or whatever." And then they just go away. It's kind, it's kind of funny how Spike. It seemed like he was about to be like the big bad of the season, <laughs> and now it's kind of just like, like Drusilla and Angel are kind of just riding all over him, especially Angel. But um, yeah, yeah. I thought the conversation between Buffy and her mom, you know, about her being, you know, getting with Angel and everything was. You know pretty deep because it was like i mean it, it felt like a very real life conversation even though a lot of aspects of it could be applied to this more you know mytholo- mythological you know supernatural world and her mom didn't know those aspects i guess but it was still like kind of everything she yeah, was okay. saying still applied and whatnot so i thought that was a pretty you know it was pretty interesting and it was just it just felt like it was a very real conversation like i felt like the way um sarah michelle geller was playing that scene like when she was acting in it like it just felt very realistic she kind of just had this very sort of you know detached kind of vibe like i really kind of wish this wasn't happening but i know it has happened and i'm kind of embarrassed to be here i'm ashamed to be here but i also want to talk about it at the same time because i don't like this is the best person to confide in and it felt like she was playing all those emotions like at the same time and um i just thought that was a pretty you know kind of poignant powerful scene well what do you think is going to happen now do you i mean obviously that floppy disk fell to the ground at the end there that seemed to maybe suggest that there might still be hope that they can restore angel's soul at this point do you even want angel's soul at this point do you even want angel's soul to be restored do you think like they can do it if they did do it do you think anybody would even be able to like forgive him like what do you even think about this what do you think is going to happen now i think that at this point with Angel, I feel like if they were to restore him now and try to make it seem like nothing happened, it would be weird. Like mm-hmm. I feel like it would it, it wouldn't it there if he was if they restore him, they're gonna have to give him some type of punishment for him to redeem himself from mm-hmm. through all that. Even though it wasn't necessarily his fault, like he was still like he was still doing all this stuff. So people are going to be like, yo, this is weird that you're back now. Like, I don't trust you. you know right. What I mean? Yeah. It's like not only just the characters in the show, but us as an audience, it just makes us see him so differently. Like, cause it's like, yeah, it, I mean, it kind of wasn't him. Cause I mean, he didn't have a soul and it was the demon inside of him and all that stuff. But at the same time, I mean, it was him. We are looking and seeing and hearing him do all this stuff. So it just feels like this is the exact same person. Like Buffy said, it's hard to imagine it's the same person. And I feel like David Boreanaz does a good job of playing that as well. Like, I don't think, have we talked about that yet? Like David Boreanaz is sort of switch in character now that he's playing, you know, the bad angel versus the good angel. Like, what are you, what are your thoughts on, no, I guess, just, what are your thoughts on his performance? I think he's doing a pretty good job like um he he seems to have not really like it doesn't really seem like to have like be like a really that much of a, a transition at all like he just kind of like fell right into it mm-hmm. like one minute he was good and, and wanted to be all with Buffy and all this but then the next minute he's just like terrible and like a horrible person like a bit like a true villain you know mm-hmm he seems to be having fun with it. I mean, I actually kind of like David Boreanaz's performance as e- Evil Angel right here more than the Angel he's been doing so far because, like, I don't know, like, just in terms of the the energy it brings off the screen. Sometimes when he was, you know, just regular Angel, and I mean, this might just be because I'm not super into like, you know, romantic lovey dovey stuff. But it was like sometimes he could just get so sappy and stuff. I'm just like. Oh my gosh. Like it would just be kind of cringy to me. But I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I guess that might just be me. But like this new version, it just seems like he's so like, you know, 
he's so cold hearted and you really kind of feel the the evil emanating off of him and it just feels like a very convincing performance so i kind of like and just in terms of the acting from david borean is i kind of am enjoying him as evil angel more than good angel <laughs> all right then i'm looking forward to seeing what your thoughts are going to be i guess on the rest of the season or the show moving forward because i do think like just in terms of tone and whatnot it does start going more towards this direction than like um i guess what's been in the past because i feel like it, it we've gotten really accustomed to the monster of the week sort of thing and i've noticed that with some of the episodes that kind of veer out of that and do kind of feel a little bit more like where i feel like the show is headed and i don't want to spoil too much about saying that but i guess i'll say that i've noticed on those episodes you tend to be like you don't like them as much which is kind of interesting to me so i guess i'm just interested to see like as the show goes like whether um it grows in that style and you start to like it more or if you get more acclimated to it or if maybe you end up being the opposite of a lot of people and actually like the f m the beginning of the show more than the rest of the show. Oh, yeah. They... Yeah. Hey. I so guess that did... was a really important episode. Yeah. So... Has your opinion on it changed any since the first watch? Uh, yeah. Uh, my opinion is it's been a complete 180. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely... I don't, I don't really like how they killed Jenny. Because mm -hmm. just because like, I, I was rooting for Giles and Jenny to be together, you know? So, yeah. like, I don't like how they killed Jenny, but I'm not mad that they did, you know? Because it's, mm -hmm. like, it's like... Like you said, going into this, like, no character is safe. Yeah. Like, and I mean, it, it kind of was like that in the season three finale, or uh, in Dead Man's Party, where that dude just, who was smoking a joint had his neck snap. Like, I, I, I really feel like it's literally like anybody can die at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't even be, I wouldn't even, if they killed Xander, I wouldn't even be surprised. Yeah. Dang, why you call Xander out specifically like that? You got something Because <laughs> No, I just my point is is that I just feel like anybody can just anybody can go at the drop of a dime. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. That seems to be the case. I mean like they don't want you to get comfortable at all. I definitely think that this episode really started to set the tone. I mean obviously this tone had kinda already been set for the rest of the season. But just, like, in terms of, like, we talked about how seeing Buffy happy at the beginning of this episode. Obviously, she already had been a lot, had a lot to be sad about leading up to this. But it feels like this mm -hmm. episode was really probably that tipping point to where, like, you know, she was as kind of sad as she is for the rest of the season, you know? And just mm -hmm. as literally hopeless. Because this seems to be the episode where she accepted that she was actually going to have to kill Angel, you know? Like, because she agreed with Angel oh, yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. like. Before that, she seemed to have some level of hope, but it seems like this is the episode where she kind of came to terms with that and, you know, had been pretty sad about that and felt kind of hopeless about that ever since. So this was this was definitely a pretty, pretty pivotal episode, I suppose you could say. Yeah, it was definitely it was a big episode for for development and Angel, I guess. Or not even really development, but just him just being bad. And, like, I guess we got to really see how grimy he could get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. And then, not even to, like, spoil it too much, but, like, knowing that he doesn't even remember all this stuff that he does, like, after he, after he gets turned. Like, because I remember in the finale, he's like, oh, Buffy, I don't remember what happened. It's like I've been asleep for for months and it's like yeah. no bro you've been out here killing people like what are you talking about like but it's like dang can you really blame him because who what can you do when someone's soul is gone right exactly exactly because i mean it's like the it's more so the demon that's inside of him doing all yeah. this stuff or whatnot the demon that got replaced inside of him when he became a vampire so yeah man it, it was definitely a good episode to really showcase angel's evilness though like you said, in a way that feels better than him just popping up and doing something randomly evil just to keep him around. So that'll do it for our thoughts on this video. 
Comment down below. Let us know what you thought about it. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you're interested in seeing the full uncut reactions, head over to Patreon because they are posted there and are uploaded um, a lot earlier than they are on YouTube. So, yeah. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your day or night or whatever you're, whatever time you're watching this. We'll see you later. Peace out. All right. And cut.